I have always had a problem with debt in my life. And uh, as I've explained before, that is a very often a trauma response. And uh, as a victim of uh, child sexual abuse uh, at the age of five, um, most of my life has been driven by trauma responses. And uh, debt is one of those issues that uh, <laughs> impacts people who ha have been through trauma in a way that is, I don't think, even visible to people who aren't. So uh, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about uh, uh, debt and why I believe that uh, Dunning notices in the postmodern world is a total exercise in futility. A few years ago, actually many years ago now, I uh, uh, <clears throat> was considering my fourth bankruptcy, and uh, I had uh, debt that was in the range of four to five thousand dollars, and you say, "Well, geez, that's not a lot of debt, Terry." But let me tell you, when you live on a fixed income like I do, debt is a serious problem because not only do you pay the debts, but then you have to deal with interest being uh, ta uh, tapped on top of it. And you see, all of this uh, comes from uh, the worlds of pre-modernism and modernism, uh, both of which were top-down um, <clears throat> cultures that we uh, have been through. Uh, but today we're in the postmodern culture, and uh, you know that is dominated by the great horizontal, because we are all the same. A URL is just a URL. And uh, we can talk to each other. Uh, interact with each other uh, at the bottom of what used to be a pyramid with the uh, cultural leaders being on the top. And we're trying to figure this out as we go along. So it's, uh, as I've said uh, in the past, it's like trying to fix a car while you're driving it. It's, um, it's not possible. So I contacted this, uh, <clears throat> this um, public debt service. And, uh, you know, they handle uh, helping people with debt. And I talked to this wonderful young man, and uh, he said he couldn't help me because, you know, my bottom wasn't high enough, uh, that you had to have at least $10,000 worth of uh, debt. And uh, in order for them to consider you viable for the program. So uh, my debt of only $5,000 was really insignificant to the top-down culture, but very <laughs> significant to me because it impacted my ability to actually stay alive. And uh, so I'm in this conversation with this guy who tells me that I don't qualify. And I, I said, well, what am I supposed to do? And here's what he told me, and I want to, you to listen to this very carefully, because this is from a man who deals entirely with people in debt. He said, <clears throat> are any of these debts secured? And I said, no, they're just credit cards. And he said, then why don't you just ignore them? And and deal with the credit ramifications because you actually can live with really lousy credit and uh, even, you know, prosper. So uh, rather than do another bankruptcy, I decided to just uh, ignore the Dunning notices that came to me. And uh, this obviously uh, was devastating to my credit. And uh, I have found a way to live with that uh, because I just don't care. The, the last words this guy said to me was, enjoy your money. Enjoy your money. And so that's what I did. And, you know, I was, 
you cannot believe the dunning notices that i get in my life because some of these credit companies you know when they run out of uh steam and contacting you they will pass it along to another company who views it as a fresh debt and they will bombard you with dunning notices pay 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 and they have a legal right to do this uh, Dunning has been around since the uh, 16th century in uh, in the West, and uh, you know it's actually a uh, a part of the uh, the system of personal responsibility that uh, was touted especially by Christian extremists in the 1990s. Personal responsibility is an important part of being a Christian they would say. You know, but to me, in my view of Christianity, that's really insignificant because it's a part of life under the sun and uh, the management culture that I've uh, talked about previously. So let me talk to you just a bit about one company, uh, you know, and I hate to name names, but this one, their behavior is uh, so uh, out of touch with postmodernism sometimes that it really is perplexing to a guy like me. And I'm talking about the online bank Affirm, A-F-F-I-R-M. I love this company uh, because they will send out to me notices when a payment is due and, uh, you know, how to go about uh, dealing with them on their website, which to me is uh, ludicrous. So if you wish, go to their website and find a way to contact them. <laughs> it's, uh, it is so buried under a pile of uh, answering machines, you know, and, and computerized responses that um, you're never dealing with a human being when you talk to a firm. It's a computer. And as I've explained before, computers aren't able to process mercy. They want nothing to do about it. It's all justice. It's uh, you have a responsibility to pay this debt. I disagree with you on that. If, if, you know, don't give me a credit card. And you would be amazed at the offers I get for credit cards. You know, 30% plus interest on those credit cards, but they're still, the institution of banking is still trying to capture me uh, in the world of debt. And I have such a different view on this um, that I just don't want to play in this world. Affirm, again, you can't talk to a human being, or it's very, very hard to talk to a human being uh, when you're dealing with the bank Affirm. Um, and I, um, I keep telling them, and I have told them, why don't you make it as easy for me to contact you as you are able to contact me? That is the reality of the great horizontal. I have the ability to interact with them, but they don't want to interact with me. Even if I just, even if it's just a note to say, hey, I'm going to be a few days late on this payment. No, you cannot give them that information because there's no avenue available uh, for you. So it's strictly a top down mechanism of the management culture. And uh, I think we've got to find a better way. You know, there are, there are plenty of uh, companies who you know, will steer you to some form of gov governmental uh, relief, but let's remember that the government in the modernist world is in cahoots with the business world to keep things running. And so, you know, plus banks are run by the extreme elite uh, of this country, extreme elite and rich people 
you know, dominate the banks and therefore are in cahoots with the government to keep it keep things just as they are. That is going to fail miserably. You know, maybe it'll take some, you know, new invention of a bank, you know, in order to pull that out. But if it's not interactive today, it's useless. It's totally futile. So why do they keep doing it? Because they're training their instincts as top-down manipulators is at stake. And they're not going to give up on that easily. So this is a challenge to, you know, future generations. And I, I think, honestly, they're up to that challenge. So let's figure it out, folks, because Dunning notices are totally futile in the postmodern world. <clears throat> of course, I could be wrong because, you know, after all, I'm just a commentary.